Uh, my name is Kavya, and I'm here today to talk to you uh, about analyzing the performance of systems. Now, why do we care about this? Well, ideally, we want to provide a good user experience to our users, so we care about things like latency or response time. And it would be nice if we remained in business while doing so, so we care about things like server utilization and um, capacity planning. Does that sound familiar? How many of you here have spent many a night trying to answer questions like this? How much uh, additional load can this system support? How many additional servers do we need? Uh, are we hella over-provisioned already? <laughs> Um, so this is obviously a very important set of questions to answer. Um, and today we're going to talk about how we're going to go about to do this. Um, and we're going to invoke the deliciously thrilling option of using prod. Now this is not a new idea, right? We just heard a talk on chaos engineering. But today we're going to apply that methodology to performance analysis. The idea is you apply load to the system, you gradually ramp it up until the system is stressed. Um, and you do this so you can empirically determine how your system behaves under load, right? You can empirically determine its performance characteristics, its bottlenecks. To do this, uh, we will look at two real world systems that are built to do exactly this. Uh, the first is Facebook's Kraken. The second is uh, OrgSim, built and used at Samsara, where I work. And once we talk about these systems, we'll take a step back uh, to leave you with a parting thought. OK, then, let's get started. Uh, first up, Kraken. So Kraken is Facebook's load simulator. It was built in about 2013, and they use it primarily to determine a system's capacity, where the capacity is the maximum throughput requests per second uh, a system can support given a particular response time constraint. Right? And they use this to identify and uh, resolve utilization bottlenecks. So you have a target capacity. If your system fails to meet that target capacity, why does it, do, uh, why does it fail to do so? Um, and they claim that Kraken has helped them increase Facebook's capacity by over 20% using the same hardware. Now, this is remarkable, not just as an engineering feat, but also, man, that's a hell of a lot of money saved. So let's look at how Kraken works. First things first, uh, the model um, of system Kraken is designed for, right? So Kraken assumes stateless servers, so no web sockets, um, no server affinity. Uh, they also assume that load can be controlled by rerouting requests um, to the system under test. And you'll see in a second why these assumptions are necessary. They also assume the downstream services respond to upstream service load shifts. So for example, if you have a web server querying a database and the database uh, hits a bottleneck, some sort of resource saturation, you expect that to be reflected in the web server. You expect to see its throughput drop. Now, this is a pretty reasonable assumption, um, and this is necessary so you can identify those bottlenecks, right? OK, so that's the model. Uh, now let's look at how it actually works. So there are two pieces to Kraken. The first is the load generation aspect. And the idea here is, what's the best representation of live traffic? Live traffic. So they use live traffic. And they do this by uh, employing traffic shifting, which is a familiar technique. You adjust the weights of your load balancers to reroute traffic to the system under test. This second piece of Kraken is the monitoring, right? You need reliable metrics to tell you and to track the health of the system so you know when it's approaching its limits. Those are the numbers you care about. And you also know when to back off. You don't want to cause a production outage while testing. So Kraken uh, employs these two pieces in a feedback loop. So let's say we have uh, the system, and now we run it against a cluster. And we get a graph that looks like this. Is this graph useful? Well, sure. It tells us the capacity, the max throughput the system can support. Right? It's simply the throughput um, right below that response time uh, threshold we've set ourselves. That number we get. Is it good, or is there a bottleneck? Well, I don't know. We have no means to evaluate the system. Um, we don't have any expectations or any targets for what we expect from the system, for how we expect to see the system behave. Um, and 
unlike in your relationship, no expectations and performance uh, analysis is never a good thing.